Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a brief look at the LibreOffice 7.2 release. And uh, this is a big release. They've been working on this for about six months, and they brought in some interesting things, particularly from a writing perspective. A few other little changes and things. Now, if you were to actually go over to the website and look at the release notes, it is absolutely massive. We're obviously not going to go through all of these release notes because there's just so many that uh, you should look through at the individual applications and see. So, of course, they have up updates that they do they do um, the updates on the page are the writer specific calc specific impress and draw specific base charts math and then they do some of the core stuff and then the filters and things like that one of the things that they're promising is even better compatibility than they have in the past regarding your docx file formats again i'm just going to keep saying this i have never had a problem with docx file formatting outside of a couple of extraordinarily weird and rare circumstances number one one, if you have documents full of a lot of clip art, why? Now, but if you do, the clip art is not necessarily cross compatible, so you might have a little odds and ends there. Um, the other area that you might find is extraordinarily weird and rare macros and stuff like that. Barring those two issues, most of your alleged incompatibilities on the format are simply because sharing from Linux to Windows to Mac do not all have the same fonts. So if you simply fix the fonts, and if you're on Linux, passing your docs over to somebody who is not on Linux, make sure you are using fonts that are going to be used by the Windows and the Mac ecosystems. As long as you fix those, generally your compatibility issues are not going to be there. Regardless, DocX does keep changing, so they have to keep changing as well. Now, there's some other things in here that, from a writing perspective, I thought were pretty cool. So I want to have a look at um, the OMG Ubuntu and the 9 to 5 Linux because they do a good summary of kind of your basics without diving into way too much. Um, there is, a, of course, they talk about the interoperability. They talk about um, some of the, the changes. The biggest new change is this new heads-up display. This is actually pretty cool in that you can go in as long as your any LibreOffice suite application is open, holding Shift and Escape will bring up this command where you can actually just type in the search command you're looking for. This is really amazingly good good because particularly if you're using like tabbed things and we're going to have a look at this new version on Zorin. Zorin defaults their LibreOffice install to use the tabbed features and I hate the tabbed features. I know it's modern and has been so for like 15 years now but I like the old classic format. Uh, Zorin has the tab formats and the biggest challenge I find with the tab formats is it's very hard to find stuff. Whereas the toolbar option, you can customize your toolbar to the things that you need on a regular basis. But the heads up uh, display is a way that you can search for everything that you need and you can get the stuff even much faster, faster than the tools, faster than the toolbars. It's keyboard based. So you're not having to go to, to toolbars and things like that. We'll have a brief look at what that looks like. And it's pretty cool. We do have a new dark um, dark mode, so LibreOffice can pull in your system theme, but this is also a full dark mode, which will darken like everything, which um, is kind of interesting to have a look at. Um, and uh, I don't know if I'll maybe I'll try using it a little bit. What I like doing is I like the dark mode on all of the rounding things, but the page I like to remain white. The dark mode even makes the page white, which means it might be inversing colors and things like that. Uh, so that's one of the things to to look at. Um, as far as calc, you can now um, filter by color in the auto filter options. And um, they have some improved paste special dialog box, making it easier to find things. And then there are five new presentation templates for those who are using Impress. Now, the biggest radical change here, uh, particularly for you Apple users, is 7.2 now has Apple Silicon native support. So that is a really good option that we have here as far as, uh, sorry for you OCD guys out there, didn't fix my color. Uh, but Apple has um, uh, 
Apple Silicon is now supported. So if you are running a newer Mac, you have now native support. Now, I downloaded this from uh, as the flat pack on Zorin. Uh, Zorin repository still has 7.1.5. Uh, uh, this is 7.2. So we're going to have a brief look at that. Uh, 9 to 5 Linux gives us a lot of the same things. Uh, they also talk a little bit about a font work panel in the sidebar, scrollable sidebar pickers, notebar, uh, notebook bar UIs, and a new um, uh, UNO object uh, inspector. So there's a lot of op uh, options there as well. And, and then uh, the other thing, a couple things for authors. Let me tell you two things for you authors out there that use LibreOffice. One thing, background fills can now cover entire pages. This is something that prevented me from doing image-based books in the past, but now this is opening up the possibility of doing image-based books. And so it's very possible now that we can use the background fills to go to the entire page, even into and beyond the margins, which will satisfy uploading to your um, Ingram or your um, uh or your um, KDP platforms so you can actually do kind of the edge to edge where you have the capabilities to do that. Although I don't know if KDP actually supports edge to edge. I don't remember. I think they do. Maybe they don't. The other major thing for us authors is that they have gutter margins. Now I'm going to speak to you guys at only office right now and I have not forgotten about you guys. Um, I will be reaching out to you soon about how we can improve only office for authors. In this version of LibreOffice, they've added a specific gutter margin to the page styles. This is big. Now, in the past, we've dealt with this just fine by having the left page, right page, and you can just add the gutter margins onto your page margins for your left and your right pages, res um, respectively. If you don't know what the gutter margin is, open up any given book, and when you print it out, and it should look about the same margin, uh, whether it's the outside of the book or the inside by the binding, that's because the extra little bit that's glued to the bottom is the gutter margin. You need more margin on the inside of the page. You used to be able to just handle that by having the left and the right margins respectively and then using the left page and right page to do it and it worked perfectly fine. That's how I've done mine. In fact, the book I'm going to send a print, which I'm still using LibreOffice 7, maybe 7.1 or something. Um, we're using that same methodology for now because I'm not going to experiment with the book yet until I get it done. But going forward, the gutter margin option allows you to set your primary margins to be the same, but then it tells you exactly what the gutter margin is going to be, which will alternate the pages left, right, left, right to give you the better margins for your book binding. So authors out there will be very excited to see that that is now a feature. Uh, with that, though, let's go ahead and uh, boot up Zorin and have a brief look at what this guy is going to look like. All right, so here we are on Zorin. And again, I installed this as the flat pack. So you can see that we are at version 7.2. Note if you are using Zorin OS, the one in the repository at the time I'm recording this is uh, 7.1.5. So uh, we're not using the repository version. In fact, if I open up my menu here, you see that we have two Libre offices. One of these is Flatpak, one of these is not. I don't know which one's which. I just went to the to the one I was pretty sure it was. So uh, here uh, I see it's a flat pack. We're running um, four CPU threads. We're running Linux, uh, the 511 kernel here. And here we have um, the base. We have the math, uh, drawing, impress, calc, and writer documents. Of course, of most interest to me as an author is the writer suite. So this is kind of what we have, and this is just following the system theme. So if I go ahead and change my system theme in Zorin to be light, in theory, it should actually give me a... Um, uh, actually, I don't think system theme is there. I think on Zorin... It is Zorin Appearance. So if I remember correctly, if I were to go to our light mode, it should change everything there. So that is just fine. So you can go ahead and change your theming however you like there. But inside of your tools and options, you can go down to application colors. And now we have the LibreOffice and we have the LibreOffice Dark. So you can see the LibreOffice Dark. Oh, um, it's too dark. 
Okay, never, never mind. It, it won't let me show that without, uh, <laughs> without getting rid of this box here. You can see here that it's giving us white text on a black page, black background. I'm not a huge fan of this, mostly because I want the page to actually look like what I want the page to print like. So I'm not personally a huge fan of this dark mode in this respect, but I realize that many people do like that. So uh, for me, I'm very happy with it, the fact that it respects my system theme. It's going to give me dark on everything except the page itself is light, and that perfectly works for me. But for those that want that dark mode, you have it. Now, we did mention the uh, heads-up display. Again, shift and escape gives you this guy here, and here we can just kind of type whatever we might want. So if I want to do like a f insert footnote, sometimes these are hard to remember exactly where they are on, on, the, on all the menus if you don't have the toolbar set up. So here I can insert a footnote. I can do the footnote or endnote dialog, insert header and footer. Um, so um, here's the footnotes and endnotes under the tools option, which gives you more options, how they display and things like that. So this is a really nice display here uh, for if you want to do that. So highlight something, uh, just do some, this is some text. And now without going into anything else, just pushing these and italics. Now you can just go ahead and do that well, pretty quick. So, of course, it's probably quicker if you just know the hotkeys, but uh, first, more obscure uh, functions like adding a footnote, this is actually a really good. So if I want to do uh, insert, um, uh, insert a footnote, oh, do footnote, insert a footnote, here you go. This is my footnote. So this is actually is a huge time saving device uh, when used properly. So very cool heads up display to see how that is working. Uh, the other issue that we had talked about mostly from the author's perspective is if you go under your styles and your page styles here, if you modify your page styles and have a look at your page, now you will see the gutter margin. And then this will say, where is the gutter position? Um, not sure I've seen a um, gutter top, although that is kind of, there's a newer format of a book that's coming in that's printed from the top. But here you can gutter on right side of page. So you can set it as the left or the right. And then um, you can set the background covers the margins or does not cover the margins. So those are the two new options that we have inside of there. So there are some of your changes on Libre Writer. If we close that out, um, I didn't look into all of the fine details here. The one thing that I, I did see is the um, paste special. Uh, let's just do, let's just copy this or just, Copy that guy there and under our paste special box here, this is where it is changed. You can do values only. I didn't think that would work so quickly. So you can quickly do values only, values and formats, format only, transpose all. You can click the run immediately or not. And then you can set what you want to be there. Numbers, text, date and time, formats comments. So these are actually very useful. I use this on my budgeting tools where I have one spreadsheet tab that lists my budget and then I copy over and I just paste the values only into the budget each month so that I can manipulate things in between. So this gives us a cleaner interface to see exactly how to do that. As far as the presentations, I don't know exactly where the uh, presentations sit. I, I do use presentations for one of my channels, but uh, I actually have my own pre-built one that I built, and uh, I don't know where the rest of them are otherwise. I just don't use Impress a whole lot. Uh, but we do have some nice new functions and features in here, uh, better compatibility with uh, Microsoft Office file formats, and we have a number of other things in here that are good as well. Particularly, I'm going to try out those gutter margins on the next book that I do, see how they work, 
and uh, the heads-up display is actually pretty cool. So these are good, nice features and options that we have inside of the system now. And so there's some of the, just a few of the changes coming out to LibreOffice 7.2. You can go ahead and try it out now without changing your existing install with a flat pack or a snap if you are so inclined. Uh, or you, if you're probably on Arch, you might be able to upload to this already. I forget, I rebuilt an Arch system the other day, and I never checked if I have 7.2 on there yet or not. Just haven't had a need to open up the Office Suite quite yet. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know uh, your favorite features of this new 7.2 release in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.